I began to think, oh, wouldn't it be great if I was with someone who got me? The grass isn't always greener on the other side. I have to take responsibility for how I express myself. It is no one else's responsibility. We start to create this expectation that it's up to my partner to get me versus up to me. But to place that expectation that we just should know our partner just because we've been there with them for 10, 20, or 30, or 40 years, I think that's just unfair on the other person. I wasn't condemning you for that. I was simply bringing it to your awareness. That's a special, beautiful space that allows me to grow and expand and know myself at another level. When it comes to relationships, I've been in relationships myself where when something isn't aligning, I begin to think, oh, wouldn't it be great if I was with someone who got me, who understood this part of me, and then I wouldn't have to explain myself all of the time. But one thing I've come to realize, especially in this amazingly healthy connection that you and I have, is that the grass isn't always greener on the other side. And having those kinds of thoughts is normal. But when we sit in those kinds of thoughts and we consistently think, oh, I wish my partner were different. I wish they got me. What we do is we start to create this expectation that it's up to my partner to get me versus up to me to seek to understand how to express myself or to understand that maybe we're just different in that one area and that can add to the relationship instead of take away from it. And so I wanted to dive in today because we see this echoed through clients, through friends' connections, whether that's friendships or relationships, where it is that constant, oh, I wish they were different. And so much time and energy gets spent and relationships actually begin to break down because we're so busy attempting to create little mini versions of ourselves that we miss just celebrating the differences and what that can teach us about ourselves. Yes, that's so powerful. And that's definitely something that I feel I didn't think of until kind of being really deep into our, our relationship. Um, I was so focused on what you were doing, which I think is an, an, you know, a natural thing for many of us, right? That's how we're taught. We're taught to look externally to help us understand how to kind of live internally. But kind of the whole thing that we're doing here with Suivera is to start reminding us that it starts from within, right? And so Absolutely. what we're doing is talking about personal responsibility. And so when it comes to relationships, that was a huge, huge, uh, you know, flip the script, as you say. Uh, when I was like, wow, yeah, no, I have to take responsibility for how I express myself. It is no one else's responsibility. If I want to be understood, I need to go through every way possible that I know how and build the skills up to allow myself to be ready to actively share who I am. And if I get feedback that says otherwise, it's my opportunity to view it as a, as a growth, or like a reference for growth to say, okay, that's me not taking enough experience or enough of my skill. And, and so I need to get better at describing or sharing more about me. And so, cause it's not, it's, it's not someone else's fault, you know, that they don't understand what I'm saying. It's my responsibility as a communication sender to do my best to help them understand where I'm coming from. Yeah, which can be frustrating, can right? Be. Because sometimes people just don't want to hear it. But that makes me think of the podcast we just did about feedback, yes. right? And if someone hasn't listened to or watched that one, we'll make sure that we put a little link to it so that you can get to it quickly. But in relationships, it's very important to be willing to ask for and receive feedback. And that podcast contains some tips for how to do that. 
and this book that we have coming out. I'm so excited. I'm so excited because we have like interest from publishers and all of this amazing stuff that's going publisher on war. around publisher wars. <laughs> um, <laughs> We have all of this amazing stuff coming around that from retreats to courses to even some kids coursework opportunities around silencing that inner critic, which can just take over us when we're in a relationship, right? That inner critic just starts rising and our ego gets flared and then we're like, well, okay, if I'm not understood in this relationship, then I'm going to go find one where I can be understood. And that can create conflict because ultimately, do you understand yourself first? How can you be understood if you don't understand yourself? And that comes back to, it has to begin within. You, it's challenging and I navigated this. And so that's why I feel like I can express it because I know what it's like. And I know not everyone is a mini version of me either. But when you see patterns repeated over and over again in your friends, your clients, it tends to signal that we're all navigating some similar things here, right? And one of those is we desire to be seen, heard, and understood but sometimes we don't see, hear, or understand ourselves first. And we're looking for someone else to see, hear, and understand us so that then we can get a clear picture of ourselves. And we really do that to our romantic partners. It's like, just get me. But then your romantic partner is like, I'm doing my best to, but it keeps changing. And that's because I don't know what I desire yet. So how can I anticipate that you will, right? And, and that's in full transparency where we started, right? You know, I was so focused on letting the external validate what I felt because I hadn't taken the time to get to know who I am, just surface level, you know? And, and so, you know, but I'm, I'm to me, I'm like, oh, well, I've got, you know, decades worth of, of, of experience of being me. So of course I know who I am. And then I realized that I had no idea who I am. And that does not, is not a direct correlation. And so through our process of, of communicating to each other and learning about the relationship as a whole, first and foremost, not putting it as like, you're a problem or I'm a problem, um, or it's a relationship as a whole is a problem. It's, it's, it was exact opposite is how do we curate this incredible connection that we have to bring the very best out of both of us? Yes. That's a great question. You know, if we just started from that standpoint and then use that as a barometer, which is exactly what we've done for now coming up on a decade, but wow, does that change the dynamic completely? So anytime there is something of feedback or there is conversation around how we can get better, it's, although we, we make sure we share it with each other, that it's not coming from a negative place, but it's also just baked in that we know like from our hearts when we share something that it is not to tear you down, but it's actually to lift you up. And, and, and so that, that in and of itself is just an incredible foundation to just say, okay, hey, from here, you know, as you said, I'm not, I'm not going to go out and just uh, start watering all the grass in different areas. I'm going like, to, the grass is greener where I water it. So it's important to have these foundations to, to put the right flowers that you want to see and then take the time to actually water it. So you can start to say, yeah, this is, this is what I'm looking for. And by that, you mean nurture the relationship yes. you're in, <laughs> yes. right? Thank you. Because everyone's... Yeah. I got a little lost in that. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, if you desire to feel connected in your relationship, then you need to utilize the tools and plant the discussion points with the partner you're with yes. in order to get that. Because if you just shift to a new relationship... Along with that comes all the same things that you're navigating in your current relationship. Now, we're not saying every relationship is going to be great, right? Maybe there is a need to shift. 
But over and over, what we've seen are these relationships, these individuals move relationship to relationship to relationship and ask the question, why do I keep attracting the same type of relationship? That's one. And then also there's also these this these individuals who have been together for 30, 40 plus years. And there's and now it's at a standpoint of like, oh, my partner is different than where we started. Uh-huh. Which isn't necessarily logical because you know, after 30 or 40 years, if we're exactly the same, you know, that how are we growing? Right? Of course we're of course gonna, we're be, gonna different. be different. I mean, we're different in the span of a year, yeah. oftentimes, right? right? And so if, if you compound that over 30 or 40 years, yeah, there's a big there, there's probably gonna be a massive difference. We shift. I mean, our whole lives change during that time. So being willing to view this these adjustments first and foremost from the space of growth and expansion saying okay well maybe this is an opportunity to get to know my partner at a whole other level why is that a bad thing why does that immediately have to be a negative why can't that be a great thing why can't that spice up the relationship or create some new opportunity or pull the best out of you you know if your partner is 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 expanding or, or, or moving in a different way than you imagined, you know, maybe that's an opportunity to grow as well. It doesn't have to be exactly the same either. It can be, you can run expansion in parallel, but it doesn't have to be exactly the same. So just because I really like pickleball now and we didn't, I didn't 10 years ago, doesn't mean that, you know, you have to be there, you know, doing pickleball every single week with me, you know, that's, but you give me the space to do it. And then when we talk about it, you're engaged in it. And, and so that's exciting for me that we get to share in that, even though you're not participating at the same capacity that I am. Right. But we had to talk about that right. though, right? That's true. And this is where, this is a tip for anyone who's looking for tips on how to get to this stage. And that's, you were very excited about pickleball and you really wanted to share pickleball with me. You really desired me to enjoy pickleball the same way that you enjoy pickleball. And I really wish I did, (laughs) I do, because it looks so fun, but it's just not my thing. And not that I desired to suppress it in you, but when we would get together with friends, you would say, you know, oh, they want to do a couple pickleball event and she doesn't know that she's good, but she's really good. And without meaning to, you were putting me on the spot to participate in something that I didn't really enjoy. And you'd say, oh, well, their partner is just starting out too. And so it's okay. You don't have to worry. But for me, I felt like I was consistently being put on the spot to engage in something that I had communicated wasn't really my primary interest. You didn't mean to be doing it. You sincerely thought I was really good at it in the times that I did play. So for me, I had to express to you I know it isn't your intention, but your action is making me feel this way. Is there a possibility that we can change the action, not your excitement, not your love and adoration for me, but just the action so that I don't feel put on the spot? And what that did was open up this bridge between us where you understood, I really appreciate the excitement. I really appreciate your desire to include me. All of that was incredibly meaningful for me. But the action of being put on the spot made me feel uncomfortable. And so I wasn't condemning you for that. I was simply bringing it to your awareness. Right. And had you not taking the time to kind of express it to me in that way, you know, my understanding was that it was because the times that you did, p- people who were very, you know, had spent a lot of time playing pickleball were not as kind to a beginner. And so. Understandably uh, so, yeah, right? right? It, yeah. It's not a game where that's. Well, it's, 
Uh, sure, but there, I mean, there are nice people who are, you know, experienced and then take time to help others. I mean, that's that was the benefit that I got, right? And so, um, and so that was just my misunderstanding of the situation, thinking that it wasn't because you didn't want to play at all. I thought it was because people were kind of being mean and, and unnecessarily. And so it was like, oh, here's here's some people who actually would be able to connect or or play in the way that that seemed more enjoyable than than the other. And so that's what I got excited about was that you would want to play with because because of that. So um you know, unintentional and that it was it was a good it was like, hey, let's just this could be something we can do together as you said. But if I was so focused on either, you know, I just want you to do what I'm doing um, because I'm doing it because we're partners, that's an unfair expectation to place on you. Now, there is going to be miscommunication. This isn't, a, you know, a, a forever, it's not like we never miscommunicate. Yeah, no, Clearly. A fairy tale, right? <laughs> we, we're explaining right it's now. It's not a written <laughs> script where. <laughs> yeah, but the point is, is that when we do, we seek to understand where where is the breakdown coming from. So we sit down and we talk it through. And this is what we we realized is like, oh, it wasn't that I wasn't, like I was actively seeking to hear you. I just wasn't putting the dots together in the way that I understood it. And then you said, okay, well, let me, it was as, as kind of the sender of that information. You're like, hey, let me take my responsibility and let me lay out exactly where I'm at. And and then I, I was like, ah, oh, okay, now I get it. It's not, it's not any situation within pickleball. It's just you just don't want to play, and that's perfectly fine. Now I get it, and so now I won't put you in that position because, um, because we both took the time to understand where we were coming from, and celebrated that, and that you don't have to do or be exactly the way I am, and vice versa. And and that's I think there's a lot of unfair expectation placed in relationships on that, and then there's a lot of unspoken you know, problems that, that arise from that. And so, you know, it may seem like one-off little comments here and there, but the problem is over decades, that builds up, that weighs you down. And then it just feels like you're just getting slammed by all of this stuff. And it's like, no wonder people feel crushed or, or like they're not being heard. Right. And so, so we do understand that it's, it's, it can feel this way. And so the problem is, is that when we, when we get to that point, then it's like, how do we, how do we move beyond that when we feel like we've expressed everything, but maybe the reality is, is that we just haven't yet. Yes. And it's really challenging to know if you have, or you haven't, right. When you feel like, oh, I've communicated over and over and they're just not listening, right? And I have felt that way in relationships. But now that I have time and space between that relationship and I've learned a lot about myself through that process, I can honestly say part of it was that I didn't know how to effectively express it either. And I've learned through my own inward study how to more effectively explain what I'm feeling. And that's a huge part of it. When I anticipate that somebody else should understand what I'm feeling because I've explained my side of it, but I have neglected to explain the feelings side of it. I've explained the circumstance and I've explained everything that led up to the circumstance, but I don't explain not only the feeling, like it makes me feel this way, but why that circumstance and everything that led up to that circumstance makes me feel this way, then there's still a breakdown, right? And so what I've learned to do in relationships, all my relationships, is start with that why it makes me feel this way before I get into any of the other stuff. Because as people, most of the time, we can take on just about anything if we understand the why, right? So starting with the why, even if it's, Hey, I have some baggage in this area. 
quite frankly, I come to the table carrying a whole tote of baggage in this one specific space. And so it makes me feel this way when this situation arises and your response is this. Now, often that means it has nothing to do with you. But as my partner, you may desire to, oh, well, uh, if I know she's tugging around all this baggage and I can change one little thing this way to help her not have that response, I'll gladly do that. But maybe there's nothing you can do at all and it just helps you understand the why when suddenly I respond in that way, right? Hi, I'm Amber. Thank you so much for watching. If you could do me just a quick favor and click like and subscribe wherever you are, it helps us more than we can possibly say. Part of what's so important with this aspect is, is we're not a finished product. And I feel like that's sometimes when, when you get to a, like society kind of almost places like, hey, when you get to X level of years in your relationship, then it just should be, it should be, it should look like this. It should feel like this. It should act like this. It should be easy. Yeah, everything, you know, or you, you just should know each other by now. Yes. But that's making a lot of unfair expectations and assumptions on people. One, I don't know one person alive who knows themselves all the way. Because every time, every new day is a new experience to get to know ourselves at a deeper level and a new experience. I mean, how many times have we done something one day and then something the next day and didn't realize that we could do the thing that we did today that we, you know, yesterday we were like, oh, I, I could never do that. And then today we did it. And like, oh, and it completely expands our awareness of who we are. So it's, that's happening to some level every single day. And there's no way we know each other, know ourselves, right? And so to place that expectation that we just should know our partner just because we've been with them for 10, 20 or 30 or 40 years, um, I think that's just unfair on the other person. As you said, we're always changing, right? You're always changing. I'm always changing. 10 years in, we're still discovering new things about each other. Right. Yeah. And it's, that makes it fun. It makes it exciting. It's, you know, we have some constants, which are incredible, but our constants are, aren't on us. The constants are on how we experience each other in terms of unconditional love holding space for each other, asking questions to like seek to understand the under individual instead of just jumping to a conclusion. You know, these are processes that we can craft and understand and, and we form them together. You know, it's not just, oh, I just decided one day and then, <laughs> you know, you have no idea. <laughs> it's, it's, we're, we're doing this together and that makes, that makes it fun. And even those aren't exactly constants they're shaping and moving and it's a fluid experience but as we grow it gets better and stronger and more incredible and here we are 10 years later and like you said it's it's i mean we are still getting to know each other in in a, and that's beautiful right i mean we get to we get to see new sides of each other and and embrace that and say wow like i can't believe that i get to love someone who is this dynamic, this intelligent, this funny, you know, this, she does so many things. It's, it's exciting. And that's how I feel too. And I feel like that's where unconditional love comes into play because neither one of us puts the other one in a box. Like this is your role in the relationship and that, that's your lane. Don't come out of that lane. Instead, it is you have the freedom to be all things, anything, everything, whenever. You know, obviously we have boundaries, right? I have my personal boundaries. You have your personal boundaries. And we know what those are for each other. And we honor those. But sometimes we're each other's best friend. Always we're each other's best friend, right? And that is a key part of it. So sometimes that best friend aspect is what rises up higher than the romantic partner aspect because we need to lean into our friendship. 
Sometimes that romantic partnership is the strongest aspect of our unconditional love. And that is just so key and pivotal. Sometimes they're balanced, but there are all these different interesting roles that we take on and not just one role, right? And that allows that unconditional love to be that dynamic where we have this organization, Sui Vera, together, which is this beautiful, beautiful thing that we've co-created. And sometimes you're leading the organization and I'm following you. Sometimes I'm leading the organization and you're following me, which in conventional sense would mean some days you're my boss, some days I'm your boss. It doesn't matter. But that's what unconditional love brings to the table. And in other relationships I've been in, that hasn't necessarily been possible because we weren't able to see each other in that way. It is, this is your role. This is my role. Do not dare move out of those boxes. And in many ways, that creates immobility in the relationship. We can't really, how do you grow in a relationship if you can't move out of that, right? Yeah, absolutely. And I'm sure there's people listening right now and and maybe thinking like, hey, I have been in a relationship for 20 or 30 years. I feel like I've done everything that I know how to, um, you know, but it's still just not a fit. And I think at some level we there is a, a point where it's like, hey, that's that's okay. Yeah. You know, that's we do sometimes we do shift as people and we do separate or we it just no longer align as a romantic partnership. You know, and that's the things you and I have talked about a lot. Like what what do we do? Right. And so, you know, maybe that's another podcast that we can really dive into to be really specific with that. Um but I think that's something that it's definitely the first relationship I've ever been in or heard anyone where it's like, hey, we actually have a plan in in case something were to shift between us, um, we know exactly what we're going to do. And in many ways that frees, it frees it up to be, to just be, to be loving, like to know that, okay, if something were to happen, I'm still going to be okay. You're still going to be okay. And, and we're going to respect each other through the process. But right now we really love each other. So, you know, and, and I get to choose to love you and you get to choose to love me. And, and like that's, that's something that inspires both of us every single day. So why make it more complicated than that? You know, why not if something does occur and we do have our moments, you know, it's not immediately just jumping ship and saying, oh, you know, it's shiny over there. Let me go do that. It's no, let's, let's dive in. Let's un- seek to understand, okay, what is going on? Because most of the time, it's usually something pretty simple. Like just a simple misunderstanding of me not fully understanding that you, you just didn't want to play pickleball. You know, I again, I just some, thought it was just from the explanation of, of what, what occurred to make you not want to f- play pickleball, but that was an aspect, not the source of it, right? And so sometimes it's just little miscommunications like that that can just blow up into these huge things. And, we, and then at some point we're like, oh, people, I've heard people say, I don't even know what we're mad at each other about, but we're still mad. It's, but it's like, wh- why? You know, so these little things can, can help us just release and allow for that, that love and that connection. And as we've talked about in other podcasts, that the, the most important thing is the love that we share. No other thing trumps that. Right. And again, as you said, even if the romantic side of our connection were to no longer serve one of us, we've made certain that that's not going to trump the love that we have for each other. And that's so important because I love you, all of you, as you are. And if for any reason you felt that this was this connection that we have was limiting your growth, then because I love you, I would never desire 
to hold you back in any capacity. And so having a plan in place that allows us to know we can decouple in the most loving way and both walk into a new aspect or a new phase of our lives, holding on to that love and that connection, it just allows us to, as you said, kind of settle into the love of it and not the fear that something is going to happen. So, so important. And fear is such a huge part of life for so many right now, right? In all aspects, whether it's politics or, uh, you know, just education, life. just like, yeah, I mean, you can name just all life. the topics. Uh, yeah. It is, and it's, it's marketed, which is the other problem, right? And so we're, 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 we're reacting based on fear. And you're, relationship is at least from my perspective i feel like our relationship is supposed to be our safe place it's not supposed to be uh, the the place of fear it's supposed to be that safe place where we feel that we are seen heard and gotten and within that it's a place for me to seek to understand that of myself i know that when i talk to you you know one moment i may understand myself as this and through the process of talking something deep with you, then I might understand myself as that, you know, whatever it is, it's different. But that, that's a special, beautiful space that allows me to grow and expand and know myself at another level, right? And I'm really, really fortunate that I've gotten to do that over the last decade with you. And I, and I feel very sad that it seems like a lot of people don't get that experience within their relationships. And that's, so if we can really focus on making that partnership be a really strong, safe place for each other, then, then it does feel free. And, and love is free in that sense. Like it, it's, it's not binding. It's not expectation. It's not shame or guilt or all these really low vibrational things that just makes it feel like control and fear. It's joy. It's it's fun, it's light, you know, it's trust, it's transparency, things that feel light and bright and, and bubbly, <laughs> you know, and it doesn't mean we, we don't have our hard times, but it also, we don't get stuck in them and they don't drag us down. They become kind of like that trampoline effect where, you know, you have to drop down far to shoot higher up, right? And that's kind of what, that's what we do. Those moments that we have that feel dense, it feels like we're pulling down into the, into the trampoline, but they always lift us back up and we shoot even higher in the air. And it's incredible. Yes. And I think you hit on something very key there, which is going back to what I was saying about this is in relationships I've had and prior to us, it is, this is your role, this is my role, and that's it. This is where you are. There wasn't the freedom to co-explore anything different. So there wasn't that safety. There wasn't that feeling of, no, I can be so many things. And as humans, we are so multifaceted, right? There are so many different things that we are and have the potential to become. And so when we, in love, place ourselves in a containment of a role, and when I say role, I mean, um, in my case, wife, mother, and whatever position I was working in at the time, like those were my roles and that's it. That's So to explore anything outside of that, meant that I was taking time away from those roles. Now I understand that, but as a dynamic human being, I desired so much to explore so many other things, so many other aspects of myself. And instead, sometimes that was met with resistance because then there was fear that was brought in, fear that that's taking away from the relationships, fear that that meant I was moving out of the relationships. You know, so many different fears, and fear counteracts love. So, of course, all that's going to do is drive things further away. I understand where it was coming from. I wasn't doing a good job either at expressing myself. 
I didn't know how to at the time. And so I added to the issues that were going on in my life. But simultaneously, if there was this container of unconditional love, of I trust in our connection, I trust in our love, and I trust that by you growing in your own knowledge and awareness of self, that will lead me to grow in my knowledge and awareness of myself, then that elevates both of us simultaneously. And I feel like that's what we have co-created together. And it's an amazing, amazing feeling. It is. And I, to kind of build on that, it's when you are able to be the very best version of yourself, then I get to benefit from that. So why wouldn't I take the time to seek to understand what makes you light up? What makes you become the very best version of you? You know, it's maybe a little selfish, <laughs> but I'm not, it's not, you know, I'm making a joke, obviously. It's, I'm lucky that I get to benefit from that. And I feel like I get that from you. And so you're constantly seeking to understand what gets, you know, what, what makes me the very best version of me. And then you benefit from that. And so together we grow. And that's such a special place to be in. Um, I once heard that, you know, one couple, I think they'd been married for 40 years or something like that. They had said, uh, you know, what's kind of what's that one tip that you have, you know, and they're like, we both feel that we are the most lucky person in the world or the luckiest person in the world uh, to have the other one. I was like, that's a, that's a very special quote. You know, that's a very special place to be in. Um, and I feel that very much with you. And I, and I feel that from you. And that does make me feel safe and secure and connected so that I can express and understand myself. You know, while also honoring, like I, I understand your boundaries. I, I honor them, I respect them, and I talk through them just as you do with me. But everything is is a we, right? It is, I'm getting to learn who I am and explore versions of myself, but I have the best person in the world right there with me to catch me when I fall and to uh, cheer me on, you know, as I rise. It's like, <laughs> what? you know, that's, what's the, that's the best. <laughs> I don't know anything better than that. And it just keeps getting better and better because that's what we put our energy into. We spend, I've been in experiences or I've seen a lot of, ex, of other relationships where so much energy is put into drama and to fighting each other and to resisting and to controlling. I mean, if even just an ounce of some of that energy went into what we're talking about, you know, all the other stuff just falls away. And so it doesn't feel like it's weighing you down. It feels the exact opposite. Yeah. And this is where I'm going to bring it back to silence your inner critic, right? Because that is a huge reason why we created this book first. We have a series of books that will be coming out over the upcoming years, but silence your inner critic is around building up that self-esteem, that self-knowing, not letting that inner critic kind of take control and direct how you respond to things, which by default, then if you're rising, I desire to see you rise. I don't feel like, oh, he's better than me now. He's going to want to leave me. I can't have that. So I need to make certain that I sabotage that somehow because I don't want him to leave me because somehow he's he's going to be in the limelight and I'm going to be in the shadows. And I've seen that happen too. So when we can understand our own inner voice and our tendency to the negative brain bias and learn tools to begin to empower our inner champion and move through that, then we start 
to direct that behavior that might just be on autopilot and we don't even understand that it's happening. That was a huge thing for me as well, where I'm like, okay, now that I'm becoming more aware of my autopilot behavior, I see how much I co-created what was happening in my life. And I needed these tools as much as anyone to do something about it. And that's what's in this book. And because I'm a true like geek and loved superhero movies, it's written in that superhero narrative. So I encourage anyone who's listening to this to go to silenceyourinnercritic.com. We have free resources out there already as a pre-launch and really look into this. So. It's only going to get better too. I mean, we have so much on the horizon with it. And so, so I'm excited that we're talking about it. And um, I'm fortunate that over the last year, I've gotten to see it unfold from just us having a conversation, you bringing it forward, just having this great idea. Uh, and then to see you dedicate so much time and energy and love into this. And then through the process, you experienced life, uh, um, you know, life altering aspects over the last year. And so to watch you with this book, you'll be able to go through these and then let the book, what you were writing, what you're going through actually support you and then have that support the book. I mean, that was just such an incredible experience. And so thank you for being vulnerable and willing to share from your personal experiences as you're writing it um because it definitely helped through mine and it will continue so and plus i really love superhero stuff so you know that's just the the marvel dc in me is just like yes yes please uh it just makes it fun um there's i mean everyone loves the hero's journey in some way it's why it's been a part of storytelling of humans for <laughs> generations and generations so um yeah i'm, I'm excited for for what's going to come so yeah. Lots of good stuff. Again, silenceyourinnercritic.com is a, we've got meditations and workbooks and lots of fun things out there just because it is so helpful in relationships to any relationship, romantic, parent, child, you name it. It helps us really pull back. So, and as you said, there's like lots of good stuff on the horizon where that comes from. I, you know, we've put a lot of blood, sweat, and tears, and by blood, I mean paper cuts, <laughs> um, <laughs> a lot of blood, sweat, and tears into creating this. And now to see that we have interest, at first we thought it was going to be an independent publish, but we have interest. And that's all thanks to our community. We've had so many pre-registers and on silentiourinnercritic.com, you can still pre-register um, to save 20%. So if you're interested, this book is really starting to catch on and catch interest. So it's a great opportunity to go out and get that pre-registration. And then we'll see. There are going to be some cool announcements, I feel like, coming up soon. So just excited to share that with our community because it wouldn't have happened without them. So thank you, heart leaders everywhere. And thank you, Sweet Vera community. Yes, I agree. And thank you so much for listening today. Uh, if you have ideas, things that have helped you in your relationship, what's you know, what communication styles have helped you? What boundaries, you know, what areas have you started to uh, water the grass on your side versus the other side that have really supported your relationship? Uh, please share in the comments below. We love hearing what works so other people in our community can learn and we can grow together and we can really build this, uh, not from this place of fear, but this true place of love. And we can overcome that and connect at this level uh, of just love. Yeah. Love. <laughs> No. <laughs> and don't forget, we have all of these amazing podcasts that you can go and re-review. The one about feedback is so vital when it comes to relationships. So again, we'll make sure that that link is there. And we can't wait to hear your feedback once you watch it. Mm -hmm.